Howdy, it's Tubal Kane again. And just a reminder here before I start today's project that for those of you that are having trouble finding my videos, because there are 350 of them, if you go to uh, this website here, YouTube uh, slash slash so on, you will find a list of my playlists, which are right here. So for instance, if you wanted to look at uh, machine shop tips number one through 100 will be uh, uh, in that area. If, if you're interested in the mystery tool, uh, all of them are available uh, at the top uh, playlist and so on uh, down the line here. I think there's about eight or ten uh, playlists. Now for today's problem, what I have here is a shaft and I need to fit this little hand wheel onto the end of the shaft right here and this is already the right diameter, that's 3 8 diameter and the end of the shaft is 3 8 but there is no keyway in this hand wheel. It fits on there fine and even room for a nut, it's a little sloppy, this is die cast you'd call it pot metal or zinc but uh, a woodruff key will fit into here as such, but I do not have a brooch that is the correct size for this uh, small diameter. That's a 330 seconds wide. My brooch set is much larger, and the smallest brooch that I have is 316, so those are not going to be usable. The woodruff key or half moon key that I'm going to use is. Uh, came out of this little spot right here which is 3 30 seconds by one half so again half inch or 3 30 seconds rather is the width of the keyway so how am I going to do this I'm going to do it in the lathe with a slotting tool which will uh, set the lathe up kind of like a shaper so we'll get a shaving like a shaper but the first problem is that this is a die cast uh, wheel. So it came out of a, a mold and we know that this would be tapered slightly. I'd like to hold this in the three jaw chuck as such but since it's slightly tapered that will be a problem so the first thing I'm going to do is put it into the atlas lathe and uh, turn this just so it's it's true and uh, round and, and the taper is gone. So let's step over to that atlas lathe. This is a 3 8 16 bolt about four or five inches long and the head is still back up into the, the chuck. And I need to uh, move this out a little bit because I'm going to have to put it in like this. And if I try to tighten this up it's going to force the handle up against the uh, chuck. So I've already found a bushing out of my junk drawer that will space that out just right. So that will go in like that and then I've got uh, some washers and uh, a nut and I'll run those down nice and tight and in a way now the handle on this I'll tighten that up with a wrench the handle is going to act like a dog and hit the chuck and will hold it and I'm going to run the tool right along here to remove the taper and this is my last pass already This zinc is turning pretty nicely. Sometimes it is a little troublesome. It's a carbide tool. Not that zinc is very hard. set my carriage stop down here which I will show in another video how I made that carriage stop but I like to come in against the stop when I hit a shoulder like that so take that out of the chuck and it's ready to put into the other lathe as you can see see that machine down real nice so that's ready to go and I've already determined by looking in machinery's handbook that uh, for a woodruff key of that size uh, the slot needs to be uh, 53 thousandths deep. Now remember the lathe will not be turned on. I'm just going to move the tool back and forth and I've set 
the carriage stop so that I only go so far. That way I don't have to worry about uh, how far in I'm going. And I'm advancing the tool away from me two or three thousandths for each pass. Not a whole lot, but each pass is very fast. And a tiny curling uh, chip will come off of there. And I'm not sure if I'm... Yeah, now I'm taking a cut. And I've got a dial indicator. I'm going to stop for just a minute. All right, I made a few adjustments here. Remember, this is just the sample piece. Put a little cutting fluid on there. Two thousandths, I moved it. Another two thousandths for a total of, remember what I had written down over there, 53 thousandths, but it doesn't matter if it's just a little deeper. And with each pass, I'm producing a tiny curled chip, kind of like the chips that come out of uh, the brooch itself. And I'm watching the dial indicator to determine how far in I need to go. Okay, that's it already. But that's aluminum, not zinc. Now this is a view of the lathe from the back side so that you can see my sample workpiece along with the uh, Loris tool holder and how that uh, tool is held in the tool holder. Now for this operation, notice that I have the slot that I'm cutting away from me, the operator, toward the back of the machine for better visibility. If you make the cut uh, toward the front, you can't see what you're doing. So uh, I recommend uh, this particular method. I've put the Woodruff key in the slot just so you get the idea here that it's already the right width. And that's what the chips look like that come out the back side. Back side wasn't even faced, but there's the key way on the outside. Pretty nifty, huh? Now I'll put the zinc one in and uh, repeat the process. I have the lathe and back gear so that the spindle is, is locked. And you notice that there really isn't any... Uh, backlash here in the gear so it's, it's like it's locked. The uh, zinc hand wheel is in the three jaw chuck and I put the uh, crank handle away from me so it won't interfere with the tool post. Now I'm going to move it in and I'll have to reset my stop. I found it necessary to remount the tool in an Aloris holder that has the longer snout because this one didn't have quite the reach that I needed because of the dish uh, shape of the hand wheel. So now I've taken a scratch cut and I've set the dial indicator which is uh, out of view and remember I want to take off 53 thousandths altogether and I've got the stop set so now watching my dial indicator or the the uh, crossfeed dial would work too I'm just going to take about two thousandths per pass. And I can feel it cutting. I can feel the resistance. And out of camera view I see the little chips flying into the chuck. That's ten thousand so far.
And it seems to be doing pretty well without any kind of lubricant, but I think I'll put a little bit of a cutting fluid on there. I zoom in just a little bit. Hopefully you can see that. And there's just a few more thousands to go. The noise that you hear is the carriage striking the carriage stop. The thunking. Okay, and that's 53 thousandths. Before I take this out of the lathe, I would like to measure it some way. And, and the way I came up with is to take a piece of 3 8 stock that I've already prepared, and it fits nicely in the hole. And then I uh, determined that a number five, 55 drill bit is the right diameter for the uh, 53 thousandths or thereabouts, and, and it does fit in there. So I am to my uh, correct depth. Perhaps from this view you can see the tool a little better that was going into the hole. And way back here is the dial indicator that I was watching. And sometimes I prefer that over uh, looking at the uh, cross-feed dial, although that would certainly work because more than likely you're not going to have a dial indicator. Notice that this uh, extended nose on the Aloris uh, tool post here was beneficial to me because of the dish here. Now off camera earlier, at the same time that I turned down the diameter here, I also faced off about uh, almost a quarter inch off the end of that. It was longer than what I needed and also it was a little problem here with the amount of reach that I had with the tool. So I, I took care of that and it's still going to fit on my shaft just fine. I wanted you to see this view from overhead. I temporarily put a piece of 3 8 stock in there to, to note that the, the tool and the tool holder is not parallel to the to the shaft, but as is at an angle. And I don't know what angle, it's not very much, I suppose five degrees, but that uh, helps give me the cutting angle that I, in my mind, think that I need in order to make that cut. Looking at the lathe and the tool from this view, I have temporarily put a center in the three-jaw chuck. And can you see how I have proceeded to center the work, the tool, with, uh, with this center so I have the right elevation. I watch as I lose, since the job is done now, and it may not uh, appear to be right on center here because of uh, the, the height of the camera, but uh, you can see here that you want it to be right on center. So that's important. Let's take another look at this tool. Now naturally these cutoff tools have uh, an angle on them, and I don't know what it is, two degrees or, or something, on each side. So if I mounted this in the tool holder and tightened the, the screws, the tool would not be level, or I'm, I'm not using the correct word, but it, it would not be level. So I use another cutoff tool underneath it in the reverse position to offset that, can you see, as a packing. So the top one is the tool that's doing the cutting and the bottom one is simply a packing. So that now the tool is uh, in the position that I want it to be. Now this might actually be a broaching operation. I'll have to look up the meaning of the word, but I suppose that I was broaching in the lathe, only it wasn't a brooch or it was a single tooth brooch. Many uh, Bridgeport mills had a slotting attachment on the back of the ram, and this, that would have been a suitable tool also to do this job. And that's what the tool looks like uh, at this angle. So if you ever need to uh, produce a uh, Keyway, that might be a, your solution. Again, this is what the tool looks like. And I happened to find this in a cigar box uh, full of cutoff tools that it was already ground here on the bottom. I didn't do that. I did regrind the end and uh, touch the top a little bit. That's all I had to do. And it just happened to be the right size to fit in this uh, 3 8 hole. But again, looking at it from the end, you can see the 
the clearance on either side. That's high speed steel. Just about ready to wrap this project up and my grandson Jordan came down. Say hello Jordan. Hi. Okay, uh, be sure and run a reamer through your hole. Now when you have a keyway in a hole you have to use a fluted reamer, not a straight fluted, uh, a spiral fluted reamer, not a straight fluted reamer. Jordan's got me double talking here. So there's no burrs. And then here's the shaft with the keyway, or the key. And we're going to go in to do our initial assembly here. Line it up. And there we go. I believe I'll cut this nut down so it looks like the thickness of a jam nut. That looks too out of proportion there. And there it is. The job is done. And now you know an alternative to uh, using a brooch with the single point brooch, I guess we'll call this. And that's how you do it. And uh, this is Tubal Kane saying so long for now. Say goodbye, Jordan. Bye.